Hello. Welcome to the WordEc Research Center Virtual Field Day. My name is Pat Ganan. I'm with the University of Missouri. I'm an extension climatologist and uh, the title of my uh, presentation today is the Missouri Mesonet, the value and application of automated weather monitoring at the WordEc Research Center. First, I'll talk a little bit about a, a brief history of the Missouri Mesonet. Uh, on the map you see here, we have 39 automated weather stations in the state of Missouri, ranging from the northwest corner of the state to the southeastern tip. And just recently, we added a couple stations just um, earlier this, uh, this year up in Grundy County. Uh, we collaborated with North Central Missouri University in Trenton and uh, set up a weather station there. And then at the, with another collaboration with Lincoln University at the Busby Farm, we set up a station uh, in Cole County, right around Jefferson City. So we now have 39 weather stations that monitor uh, near real time conditions every five minutes. And this has been ongoing for nearly 30 years. We started in 1992. It was a collaborative effort with my colleague in the upper right here, John Travlos. He is uh, one of the co-directors for the Mesonet and myself, I am the other co-director for the Missouri Mesonet. We, uh, we have uh, all sorts of online information in regard to uh, current weather conditions. These are what we call the real-time maps, and you can see some of the conditions that we provide, air temperature, rainfall, humidity. If you were to click on each of these links, it'll take you and give you those current conditions around the state. We do soil temperatures, not uh, many folks, the weather service does not have uh, real-time soil temperature monitoring. So we provide that information as well at the two inch depth and the four inch depth under bare soil. We provide solar radiation information. And we also provide information at different heights when it comes to detecting low level surface temperature inversions. So you can actually get temperature and humidity conditions, not only at the standard height, which is five and a half feet for all these stations, but 13 of the weather stations <clears throat> in Missouri report temperature and humidity at 10 feet above the ground. Then we have the, the standard five and a half feet. And then we also do a foot and a half above the ground to monitor for those low level surface temperature inversions, which, um, which can be used in assessing or making decisions on whether it's a good time to spray uh, uh, your, your fields. On the upper right is a map showing again where the weather stations are located, but you can uh, click on a location and uh, you'll get a drop down menu. Obviously we're at the WordEc Research Center, so we're gonna select Cook Station uh, just to the west of the Word Research Center in, in uh, Crawford County. And then if I'll zoom in on the lower right, you could, once you, collect, once you select Cook Station, it'll take you to the real-time map. And this is uh, for the current conditions at, uh, at the WordEc Research Center. Again, these update every five minutes. You, on the left, you see current conditions for temperature, dew point, humidity, the wind speed, the peak wind gust, the wind direction, barometric pressure. We also have fuel moisture, fuel temperature information for those who perhaps want to do any per, uh, prescribed fire burns to know what those fuel moisture contents are of the vegetation. And of course we have the soil temperatures, the, the two inch bear and four inch bear at the WordEc Research Center. And then just to the right of that, we have a little climatology for today as well as for yesterday. So showing what the high and low temperature have been, what time they occurred, peak wind gust. And then on the lower right, that's an actual uh, Doppler radar image. If you click on that, it'll give you a bigger picture of the current radar conditions uh, around East Central Missouri. And, and that's from the National Weather Service Doppler radar located in St. Louis. And obviously Crawford County is the region of responsibility is with the St. Louis Weather Service Office. That little red circle towards the bottom, we have, you can go and look at the archive of weather conditions. We set up the Wardak Farm Research Center uh, weather station back in 1992, and we had conditions beginning January 1st, 1993. So you can get the latest, um, all the way back to latest conditions over the past five minutes, all the way back to 
1993, the, uh, the hourly conditions, the daily highs and lows. I'll click on that and that'll show you where you, the, the web link on accessing the Missouri Historical Weather Database. You pick uh, the Cook Station uh, station and then you can go back many, many years to get those latest conditions. You can pick whatever variable of interest you'd like to see. And then on the right, we actually, uh, there's a resource, uh, they're called Regional Climate Centers and the Midwestern Regional Climate Center, Missouri Falls and their region of responsibility. And we provide all our temperature data, all the historic data up through yesterday, we provide that to the Midwestern Regional Climate Center. And what, what's nice about that is they have a lot more tools and products. It's a, a more robust system in assessing climatologies and getting tables and all that sort of, of, of good information. And you can access that. It's the website on the lower right is how you would have, you can register. It's a free, freely available. You register for a free account and you have complete access to all our WARDAC Research Center uh, temperature data. And that includes all the weather stations in the mesonet. And then I'll, I've just shown an example. This is a table showing the, the average temperatures since 1993 on a monthly basis. Uh, it's 100% intact. We, have, don't, we do not have any missing data, so it's, it's just a really great resource in getting information and getting an idea of the climatology that we have at the WERDAC Research Center. When you have nearly 30 years of data, you have a climatology, you get an idea of what's average, you get to see what the trends are over the years, and you get to see what the extremes are. Uh, and this is a nice resource to get that sort of information and have it compiled into these various tables. And this is just one example. And then I've highlighted like what the warmest year on record was in 2012. 58.3 degrees was the average yearly temperature for the WARDAC Research Center. And just a couple years later, you had your coldest year on record in 2014. Of course, we had some very, we had somewhat of a cool summer and a cold, pretty, a, a fairly cold winter uh, in 2014. Again, uh, just some more information you can get from the WARDAC Research Center, um, what they call thermographs, which are uh, on, the, on the left here, you can see you get the, the latest conditions for the month. Uh, this is the, uh, the one for October. So we have conditions of high and low temperatures for October 1st through the 31st. You can see what the record highs were, the record lows. Just a lot of good climatology information on the right. We have maps that are generated using the Midwestern Regional Climate Center's tools and products. You can get a chart showing the high and low temperature um, for the year. I put the 2020 records beginning January 1st all the way into September. And then uh, on the bottom right, you can actually uh, chart growing degree day information. You can pick your base temperature for here. I, I picked a base of 50 degrees. You can look at the accumulations on where you stand when it comes to growing degree days. Of course, that's, uh, that's useful information, not only in agriculture, but also for gardening and things of that nature. You can do heating degree days, cooling degree days, uh, all based on temperature information for, from the WERDAC Research Center. So just a really nice repository of all the climate records we have for the mesonet. And of course, I'm focusing on the WERDAC research data that we have here. <clears throat> Another product is uh, freeze probabilities, frost freeze probabilities. If you have, uh, again, if you have uh, decades worth of data, you can calculate a climatology of your growing season. When you would anticipate your average uh, uh, first fall frost or your average last spring freeze. And these are just charts or graphs that are provided by the Midwestern Regional Climate Center where you can get a lot of great information and look at various temperature thresholds. This is color coded here and what I highlighted in the yellow line. This is the probability of a, of a later freeze in spring than indicated. And th again, this is for the uh, WARDAC Research Center using the data from 1993 to 2020. You can see that the median date for your um, last spring freeze, the 50% line, is uh, about April 19th. Obviously, uh, it, it's somewhat of a microclimate when you're in the Ozarks. Uh, they tend to run a little bit, their growing seasons tend to be a little shorter compared just to say in central Missouri because of the impacts of the Ozark Plateau plus the uh, effects of being in a valley or a hillside. That can also be, create some localized conditions. Obviously, with the Wardak Research Center, it's, a very, it's in a low-lying area. 
um, not, not too far from the Merrimack River. And so we do get uh, somewhat uh, later times, later dates than typical for that latitude of where we see our last springs uh, freeze or our first fall freeze. So again, these are just some uh, statistics, great information. If you're a gardener, if you're uh, a, a farmer, for getting this information and getting an idea for your location of what those uh, frost and freeze probabilities are using various temperature thresholds. And of course, using nearly 30 years of data that we have from the Word Act Research Center. So this is the spring one and this is the fall one. So these are the probabilities of an earlier fall freeze earlier freeze in the fall than indicated. Uh, again, we're in October, so it's, it's, I put in some of, the, uh, some of the dates here, looking at a 32 degree temperature threshold, which is this yellow line, typically about the median date for the, your, your first fall freeze generally falls around October 11th. Uh, you can see on, if you go to the left that it, it has occurred uh, much earlier, of course, uh, it can vary from year to year, but there's only about a 10% probability that you will see a first fall freeze of 32 degrees or lower earlier than September 26. On the other hand, if you go to the right side of the chart, you'll see that 90% um, chance that you will see a um, first fall freeze or a temperature of 32 degrees or lower by October 28. And then I put just above that the on record, so we have nine, nearly well, 28 years of record if you count 2020, the earliest fall freeze during that period occurred on September 22nd, 1995. So that is the earliest time we've seen a fall freeze of 32 degrees or lower. Of course, and I, I'll go back to the spring one. It looks like uh, the latest spring freeze occurred twice. It occurred on the same date, May 16th, 1997. Uh, and then also May 16th, 2014. So that gives you an idea when it comes to extremes on what we've seen at the Word Act Research Center when it comes to the last spring freeze and the first fall freeze. Other uh, resources we do have, uh, Missouri is not the only state that has a mesonet. We see them in Illinois, they have them in Michigan. Uh, other states as well, but we do have a collaboration that's been ongoing for a few years now with the Midwestern Regional Climate Center and other state mesonets in the Midwest. We call it the Midwest um, Mesonet Consortium. And what we've done over the past few years is uh, a lot of these states, we monitor the same variables. And so we can provide information and send it to the Midwestern Regional Climate Center. They do it from Michigan, they do it from Illinois, and they do it from Missouri and you can get a map uh, that generates on a daily basis. We, the, these, this map here in particular shows the two inch bare soil temperature uh, on September 23rd. And it's, it's a nice resource just to get an idea of what those soil temperatures are doing, not only in your state, but nearby states. And we also have an archival on the left. You can see, you can look at four inch soil temperatures, potential evapotranspiration when it comes to looking at water use from crops or in your garden, you can get an estimate of what water loss is during the growing season and make assessments on perhaps when you might need to put water uh, on your crop if you're an irrigator or you need to water your gardens based on water use. And uh, so if you, if you have irrigation scheduling, this would, could be an opportunity to see what those um, evapotranspiration rates are like. We also have, you can look at over the not only the daily average soil temperatures, but you can look at the seven day period, see what those weekly average soil temperatures are. And we do archive these maps. I believe we started in 2014. So we have quite a few years. We can go back and look at what those soil temperatures were throughout the course of the year. Not only daily, but also weekly. And again, when you have a, a nearly 30 years of data, at the Word Act Research Center, you can uh, uh, look at the climatologies, look at the extremes. Our hottest year on record was in 2012. The coldest year was 2014. Um, and then you can go on down the list. The hottest month was in July of 2012. Coldest month in December of 2000. You can see the variability. Hottest day on record of 107 degrees towards the end of June back in 2012. We had a very hot uh, summer that year, we also had a, an extreme drought impact not only Missouri, but surrounding states. It was uh, uh, one, of the one of the worst droughts we've seen in decades 
occurred back in 2012. Wettest year on record was in 2008, nearly 53 inches of rain fell at the Wardak Research Center. Driest year was in 2014. So 2012 was not the driest year on record, but 2014 uh, was just a little about half of that when you compare it to the wettest year on record, just over 26 inches fell in 2014. Your wettest month on record over a foot of rain in April of 1994, nearly 13 inches. Driest month is September of 2004, just only three hundredths of an inch. Your wettest day on record at the Wardak Research Center occurred on July 26, 1998, 5.61 inches. Here are some more resources. Uh, of course, I would encourage folks, if you, if you want to look at more information when it comes to climatology and weather data for the state of Missouri, we do have the State Climate Office website. I do work as the state climatologist for Missouri, and so officially this is the state climate office website, climate.missouri.edu. We have a lot of information, monthly weather summaries. We also have other tools and products that I would encourage, perhaps if you're interested, to look at, including links to the, to the mesonet, to the inversion information. Uh, we have other tools called the Design Storm Alert System for folks who are livestock operators. Uh, we provide information on extreme precipitation events. When they do occur, you, you would receive alerts on various um, uh, extreme events when it comes to precipitation. We have the freeze guide. I talked a little bit about freeze probabilities. We do have a Missouri freeze guide. We have crop water use apps. Uh, please feel free to check out this information and check out some of the resources. Again, there's the link for uh, mesonet.missouri.edu is uh, where you can access all the weather information as well as the real-time sites, including the Wardak Research Center where we have a real-time weather station. Thank you so much uh, and feel free to, if you have any questions or you'd like to visit more, uh, I'd be happy to visit with you and, and, and provide any, inform any uh, information or questions you might have. This is my contact information, my email address, my phone number, and I really appreciate the opportunity for you taking the time to uh, uh, watch my presentation. And uh, thank you so much. Have a great time. And I hope you enjoyed the Wardak Research Center Virtual Field Day. Take care. Bye-bye.